Let's football live and my guest today is the new head coach of Jamshedpur FC, Owen Coyle. Somebody you guys might remember really, really well from uh, what he achieved with uh, the two-time champions Chennai FC in season 2019-20. Took them on an absolute dream run that almost had a fairy tale finish. Chennai FC had five points in six games and had scored only four goals. They went on an unbeaten run towards the end of uh, eight games and so nearly uh, could have had their hands on a third uh, on the ISL trophy for the third time. But it's going to be exciting times because we get to chat with uh, Owen Coyle now. Uh, Marcelino is there. Hi, Marcelino. Hope you're doing well. And I hope things are better in Brazil, my friend, where you are. Um, as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Really excited about today. Uh, had a great chat with um, uh, Akshay Tandon yesterday about uh, FC Goa and the, and the plans they have in place uh, going forward. And of course, the AFC Champions League. Today, we get to talk about Jamshedpur FC and of course, Owen Coyle's time in India in season 2019-20 of the ISL. So I'm going to waste no further time and I'm going to get to it straight away. And he's going to be joining us from the Jamshedpur FC handle. Hello, sir. Anna, how are, how are you? you, my friend? Very well, very well. Good Thank you. you. I, I believe Instagram's been giving you some trouble, so you had to use the Jamshedpur FC handle to get in. Yeah, well, I, I don't, uh, I don't do social media as such. My my son certainly does, so he keeps me up to speed. So being a little bit older with this, uh, but happy to join you today, absolutely. And it's great to be able to do it through the uh, the club Instagram as well, as long as with yourself. So all good, all good. Excellent, excellent. So does he? Does your son transfer all the brick bats and the bouquets both to you? Yeah, well, he's obviously a, he's a, he's a dab hand at that. He's a, he's actually the head coach of, of England amputee a soccer team. So there's not many times that you have a, a Scotsman in charge of, a, of, a, of an England national team. So he, <laughs> he, keeps up, he keeps me up to speed. He keeps me abreast of everything. Excellent. I can see the Jamshedpur FC scarves around your neck, which is always yeah. a good thing because we'll be we'll be focusing a lot on that today. Absolutely brilliant. No, listen, I'm looking forward to it. It's, uh, we're very fortunate and very blessed to be in, in the best game in the world in football. And it, it's nice to go to, to, to share some of that with you know, people asking questions and, and different things. So it's, it's a great format you have and I'm happy to be invited on. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and, and likewise, thank you for taking your time for this. Now, I wanted to know your first impressions of uh, Jamshed FC and what the last... 48 hours have been like for you because I believe you've been interacting with uh, with press from literally every corner of the country. Yeah, I've, I've got to say, you know, it's been as a, the nature of football, it's been hectic, but I've, I've loved every second of it. Listen to sit and chat with, with football people like yourself and, you know, it, it's been great. Uh, and it's nice as well that the, you know, particularly with everything that's going on, that, uh, that obviously, you know, Jim Shedpo has been seeing a very good light, everything's positive about what we want to do. And uh, so it's always nice in, in that respect of the opportunity. So it's been busy, it's been great, but, but that's the way we like it. You know, we love that. We love interacting with people. You know, we like to think we have some nice social skills and be able to chat. And the one common thing that we all have, we all share a, a real passion and a, and a real desire for football. And, and that's a huge thing. Certainly is. And I, and I know that that passion almost, uh, yeah, you know, it overflows when every time you're, you're in front of a microphone. But... Let's not forget that people haven't failed to notice the Ronaldo 7 jersey just behind you. What's the story with that coach? <laughs> well, to be honest, that's uh, so my, my, my son obviously has a, a collection of a number of, of players' side jerseys that, over the years. And so just to let everybody that that's not our new signing. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, I, wish we had the, I wish we had the budget for it. But uh, so throughout, the, throughout his, his office, he has various, uh, you know, on the other wall actually is messy. So... And I'd love to have brought the two of them to jump shed. So, uh, so that's just it. That's the seat I'm situated in. I can move it away. But uh, listen, we, we love wonderful talents and, and Ronaldo's certainly one of those. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, if those two land up anywhere close to India, they, they'll be lapped up in, 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 in seconds. But, but again, I mean, uh, thank you so much for this because, uh, you know, we, we've been waiting to have a chat with you right from the time when you had that absolute uh, dream run with uh, Chennai and FC. So, uh, my apologies to Jamshedpur FC, but there might be a, a couple of mentions of uh, the season that, 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 that's gone by as well. Uh, absolutely. Listen, I think it'd be, and I think, you know, football lovers, we all love football. That's a couple, one common thing. And I think it'd be totally remiss and we didn't speak about that because it's a wonderful club with, with so many good people. And, you know, and, and obviously, you know, I had a fantastic time with them and, you know, you'll never forget that. So, no, I think it's only fair. 
as you can see, the super machans are also on this, and they're showing you their love as always with the blue hearts. And you know, they they warmed up to you so nicely, coach. The super machans, the beast and blues, the fans of Chennai and FC have, have bid you farewell in such a in in such a gracious way as well. We just tells you the relationship you had with those fans. Yeah, it was very important as it always is, and I think the important thing you know, fans fans recognise. You know, they know they know who's working hard for them. They know who cares about the club, who's passionate about it, and I think they seen from day one that. Myself and Sandy coming in with the existing staff and the players, we're doing everything in our power to, to try and you know, put a smile on the face, try to win games and play in a manner befitting of the club. And the one thing I think they've recognised is that while we were there, we, we poured our heart and our soul into the job. We really did. And that's obviously what we'll do now at Jump Shed Tour because that's the nature of, of football. But the one constant in any football club is always the fans. And the fans at Chennai, and as they are at Jump Shed Tour, they're outstanding. They get behind the team through thick and thin. You have to remember, you know, obviously, uh, Chennai, and for being two-time champions, had a really difficult year the year before. They had a really slow, yeah. start, really slow start last year, but those fans were still there. They were still backing their team. They were still getting behind them. They were vocal. They were colourful. They were singing their songs. And that's the true testimony to fans. It's not just when things are going well. It's in those difficult moments. That's when you see the true fans. And I think they were a credit to the club. They really were. And they, and they embraced us straight away. I think you could see from the, the antics at the touchline how much we cared because we wanted to win and we had to, we had to win straight away. And that's something that, again, I noticed in my first uh, visit to India because my first game was at Jim Shepard. Going into the stadium, a beautiful stadium. The playing surface, it, it was as good as Wembley. Honestly, it was, like a, it was just a fantastic surface. Uh, and it gave us a chance to, as I say, to, to soak that up, to sample that. And here was a fan base, over 20,000 over 20,000 at every game for Jim Shedd. Yeah. Now, this is a club that haven't reached the playoffs yet, but those fans are still there and get behind their team. The passion that they have in Jim Shedd and Jarkan for football. I mean, I think the league, there's been a league in Jim Shedd for over 75 years, you know, even before independence and everything. So that tells you how much they love the football. So now it's an right. opportunity to come in, as we did at Chennai Inn, with pour our heart and our soul into the job and try to take the club into the playoffs with a chance to be champions because that's that's the desire and that's what we want to do. Sure, that puts a smile on the faces of all those red miners and Jamshedpur FC fans because they, they certainly can't wait for the ball to be kicked around once again by Jamshedpur FC players. But, yeah, you know, the irony is not lost on people like us who are anchors and commentators when some sort of poetry is seen in the, in the way a coach is appointed. You, your first game in charge for Chennai and FC in season 2019-20 was Jamshedpur FC. Uh, in a game that Chennai FC should have won, but for a, but for a little bit of a little bit of a help with a handball from uh, Farooq Chaudhary, if I remember correctly. <laughs> but now you're with Jamshedpur FC, so I wanted to know what are the factors that made uh, Jamshedpur happen for you? Where you were convinced that as a coach, uh, the club facilities are such that you know this is the place that I want to be spending my my next year at least um, in the in the Hero ISL. Yeah, and and the thing about it is, it wasn't that you know because when you know I've been since March 14th after the final, I've been a free agent because that's when my, my contract expired. So yeah. I've, had, I've had a number of offers, both home and abroad, and, uh, and, and, and never and, and didn't take them. So coming to Jamshedpur, that's no slight on Chen Chennaiyan or anybody there, far from it. But the, the attraction with the Jamshedpur was because Chennai has had success and they will have it again. But the attraction was uh, Jamshedpur have not. And to be a, and the thing in football, when you think, you, know, you always want to feel you've got a chance of winning, a chance of bringing success. And I look at Jim Shepard, I look at the infrastructure, I look at the people. Immediately, the first conversation I had with Muko was you know, so positive, his vision for the club and everything that goes with it. So when you, know, you hear that and then you look at the infrastructure, you look at the, the stadium, the training, the training facility, you understand that obviously the, the, the Tata Academy, the young players that come through in the area and how they've helped develop and grow. And that's a huge part of it as well, Anand, because it's not just for me, about a quick fix. It's actually having the opportunity to put something in place that can have longevity, even after, you know, long after you know, we're all gone. As, because I said before, players, coaches, we all come and go, but the one constant is the fans. So you want to put something in place that will serve the club well for years to come. And that now gives me the chance to, to, to come in and do that because of the infrastructure, the facilities, and everything that goes with it. And particularly, yeah. again, uh, the young players... And, I've got to stress this, and you know, because obviously, and that was, as much as people said nice things last year and different things, the, the greatest pleasure I had, I've got to say this, was the development of the Indian players. How much 
our Indian players got better, how much they grew, they developed. Not only, I would hope, as footballers, but as human beings, you know, how they lived their life off and on the park. They understood what it is to be a professional footballer. And that's what I want to bring to Jamshedpur as well, to help the Indian players. Because if they play well for Jamshedpur, then they then catch the eye of Igor, who I speak to, you know, a lot, because we share a lot of, a lot of things in common. And he knows that I'm all for developing uh, the Indian players. I mean, I think I was one of the coaches at the coaches meeting when we had it and said, you know, I'm, I'm fine with you know, meeting the AFC criteria because it gives Indian players more opportunity. Uh, we are going to have to fulfil the AFC criteria and that will mean more games. More games helps to develop the Indian players because the more games you play, the better you become. But that in turn also helps the national team. And I don't want to get away on a tangent, but when I look at Indian football coming in and seeing everything they had, and how it's growing year by year and getting better. There's no reason, I said this to Igor, looking, you know, maybe a couple of qualifiers ahead. I think India will have a chance of reaching those World Cup finals, which would be an unbelievable boost, you know, for, for everybody involved with Indian football. Because although, when, although you're a foreigner and you come into a new country, I still think yeah. you, have a, you have an obligation, not only for your club, but to help the actual game grow and help it develop. And I think, you know, Indian football, particularly Indian Super League, year after year, it's getting better. And it's, it's great to be involved in it. It really is. Fantastic. I mean, th th that's exactly uh, the kind of questions that have come in for you as well, Coach. I mean, some stuff about Indian, foot Indian footballers and, and your vision to play along, to play well, to play the kind of football that you played with uh, Chennai and FC with those Indian players. But, but uh, I think you've answered Dave Madhundar's question who wanted to know about you joining JFC and club's facilities. There was also a question from Jamshedpur FC fan zone who wanted to know what you thought about the training facilities. I'm sure you ha you haven't visited Jamshedpur since you played that game uh, over there, but but have you had a chance to interact with uh, the management and try and understand what kind of facilities will be available to you, given that this league and this season will be entirely different this time around than what was on offer last time? Well, that, that's right. So obviously, it is going to be different this year in respect of we look as though we'll, we'll all be based in, in the one area. But with regards yeah. to facilities, yeah, because when I came to my first game, we arrived two days early so that we could train. So I actually got to use the facilities while I was there for my first game in India. And, uh, yeah. and, and I have to say this, because obviously coming from and being involved in the, the game, football is the same game, but there's different levels. And the higher you go, the levels, the speed of the game becomes faster, the pace and the power, the technical ability, everything that that takes you to a Ronaldo or a Messi and everything else. But coming in from where I've been in the Premier League with unbelievable facilities in England, when you look at the stadiums, infrastructure. But immediately, I've got to say, when I came to Jump Shepherd, it was incredible because the stadium was outstanding, the playing surface, the training facilities, but even out with that, the, the, the conditions that helped the players. And I thought to myself, this is fantastic. This is on a par with you know what, what I've seen before at a very, very high level. So immediately, yeah. that, that, that strikes a chord with you. And uh, another thing as well, obviously, I'm sure they're very fortunate because I think at the moment they're the only club that own their own stadium, their own training ground, and everything else through all the work of the you know the, the group and everybody there, which it shows you the passion, the love they have for football, and, and I think it's very important as well. It shows you the love and passion they have for the people that they're prepared to build these you know facilities they've done for the people in, in the area and the state. So that that's a huge thing as well. So I see it, it's great to be involved in it, and hopefully. Hopefully, I can repay the faith that everyone's shown in me. Yeah, it's a fantastic project, Jamshedpur FC. I mean, we know the history and legacy that comes with the city uh, in Indian football uh, in particular, with the academy, the residential facilities, the training grounds at the stadium. It's a, it's, it's a model that a lot of Indian clubs are looking to follow as well. Coach, so you found yourself in the in the perfect place if you're looking to build for the future. And hopefully, the future will have uh, Thapa 7 or Amarjeet 7 behind you and not Ronaldo 7. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe a decade or so down the line. Who knows? But there's a. I'll jump to the next question, which comes from Mr. Suspicious, and uh, he wanted to know what would be your primary tactics with Jamshedpur FC, and of course there is a mention of attacking football. Well, well, it will be. I mean, and, and, and I say just now, you know, obviously we'll it'll be a new, a new situation because everybody will be in the in the one place in regards of training and sharing facilities and everything else. But but that won't change our outlook. We will look to be very positive. We'll look to. I want to. I want to have a winning team. I want to win. I want to be as we all do. Be successful. Enjoy because that's what football does. The highs of winning. It's an unbelievable high. But equally, when you lose games, I mean, we all get you know really disappointed because we care and we love the game so much. But 
on the back of winning football, I want to be in a style, as you've seen last year, that's the way our teams play. We play in the front foot, we pass and we move the ball, we play at high intensity and we look to be very entertaining. The best sight, the best sight in football, as we all know, is the ball hitting the back of the net. Yeah. Second to that for me, it's when people take, you know, somebody, I come to you, I take you on, all of a sudden you have a 3v2, a 4v3, your winger takes a fullback on, there's a cross coming in, we start to get excited. I want to play that football that people enjoy watching. I really enjoy watching that and we can win at the same time. So it's getting the balance to do that. But we will, you know, when you look at our players, it will be technical players. It will be people that will pass and move the ball. We already have a number of, as you know, uh, both domestic players and uh, Aitor Monroy and David Gronde, signed from yep. last year. Two very good technical players. I'm looking forward to working with them. And obviously, you know, with the domestic players, we have some wonderful young talents. So you and I have touched on this before, but there are a couple of signings very close to being concluded that I think will excite our fans. And, uh, and that's what we'll look to do. We'll look to get everybody together, foreigners and domestic players, because there's a number of domestic players I want to sign as well. And when we do that, I'm going to, as I say, look to build a very exciting team. A team that plays football that everybody enjoys watching. Because I just feel you want to win games, but you've got an obligation to entertain. So when the jump Shepherd fans look at their team, they look and think, do you know what? I really enjoy watching my team. Because their support, if you look at the, you know, uh, the fact that they have been starved on a playoff place and a chance to, you know, a really successful season, but they still come in the numbers, they still get behind the club. So we want to reward them for that for that that loyalty that they've shown. I remember I remember reading your interview uh, just before the ISL final and, and it spoke of entertainment. It spoke of how Players sometimes or teams sometimes expect fans to turn up every single time, but there's also responsibility that the teams have to ensure that those fans turn up, and that's where the entertainment comes in from, uh, you know, from players and from teams. And maybe this is the season where where players will understand and realize that a little more because there might not be, or there certainly won't be any fans in the in the stands. So it's it's almost like you got to play that football now to be to ensure that those guys are watching uh, watching you grow. No, and I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's just such an important part of football. Because, you know, as I said before, the fans, I know it's going to be difficult as it won't be the games, but we know how much they love their clubs and, and it keeps football vibrant and energetic and keeps it going. But I do think, I do feel there's a responsibility to make sure. I always say, you know, when we say, oh, come for the fans, come and support the team. But there's also an obligation on the players to get the fans excited, you know, to get them want to shout and, and, and sing their songs and, and do everything. And I always say that to the players. You know, embrace embrace that responsibility and go and show your quality. Go and entertain, and particularly at the top end of the field with what I call the match winners. You know, go and try something. It won't always come off because it's the most difficult part to score goals. But try. You know, be expressive. Enjoy yourself. Play with a smile. If it doesn't, then of course we get back in. We work hard for the team. But I give them the the freedom to go and express themselves and show their quality. Um, okay, now now the other the other part that a lot of people want to know is obviously from Jamshedpur FC's point of view, um, there have been disappointments along the way. Yes, last season is uh, is is you know they finished where they didn't want to, uh, but they've come close to qualifying for the playoffs twice. And uh, I wanted to know your thoughts on the ingredients that are you know need are required for that team to achieve that objective, which is to make the playoffs first of all. Yeah, again. It's a, it's a brilliant question, Anand, because I think it's fair to say that if you look at the, the Indian Super League, there's a lot of teams that, you know, there's probably just, a, the margins are so fine. And the important thing is to come in the right side, come out in the right side of the margins. Now, I think the key, certainly from my experience of, of, of learning, as I did, because there's a, there's a lot to learn in the league, and, and I've, I've loved every second of it. A lot of people helped. I've got to say, you know, Amoy uh, at Chennai, and I mean, they have a fantastic eye for football. And, I mean, somebody I believe that probably could go and work anywhere in the world, such as his, his knowledge and his, his quality. And so so he helped a lot for myself and Sandy to settle in. There's no doubt about that. And uh, But within the league, I think it's really important that the balance is right between the foreign players and the Indian players. That's really important. And the other thing as well is that everybody's on the same page. And I always stress, wherever I've been, as talented as you are individual, you're not any more important than anybody else. You know, your strength has got to be as, as a group. We can't have, we all due respect, big egos. That's not what it's about. It's everybody come together. This is, a, this is a team game. It's not an individual sport. If it's individual, yeah. then, of course, go and play your tennis or your golf, whatever. It's fantastic sports. But football is a team sport. It's the best sport in the world for a reason. 
because when everybody comes together as a team, it's, it's really special. So you need all that. The other thing as well, obviously, particularly when you make an investment in foreign players, as best you can, and it's not always possible because the name, it's a physical game, but you can't have players, I would suggest, top, top players, missing for a period of games. I think that hot jump shed put a little bit last year with Castell and Petey. So, again, because the margins are fine, it's important that as best you can, and maybe, you know, obviously, your training takes that into account as well. You have those players fit physically, mentally, together as a group, and everybody available for, for the big game because, you know, the, the, as I said before, that little moment in the game could decide the game between winning and drawing or losing a match because that's the quality of... If you look at the attacking players in the league, there's fantastic quality throughout the league. So you can't switch off for a split second, but you need everybody really, to, at the very best, physically and mentally. And this year, you touched on it earlier, the mentality is going to be a huge thing this year, and because it's new circumstances... Everybody may be in one area. You may be restricted with movement and different things. It's going, to, it's, yep. going to, it's going to take a player with a strong mentality as well. But, listen, every challenge is a new challenge and, and one that we're all looking forward to. Well, that mentality, that self-belief, that character was uh, was on display in abundance the, the last time you were in charge of an ISL team. So, we can't expect anything less than that this time uh, as well. Um, there's a question from Antesh Singh who wanted to know, what all do you require to build a successful team? I mean, you certainly don't want to be in dire straits when you land up in India, which you were, but, but what is required to, to have success? Otherwise, if, you, if you've got the odds stacked up in your favor like you have now compared to when you were last time around. Yeah, I, th I think uh, I mentioned this before, and you and I have spoken about this, Anna, because uh, your knowledge of the game is extensive. And, and we said the pre, the pre season is very important because that gives you a chance to outline your plans and everybody can see what we're doing. It gives you a chance to work on it, you know, for a number five, six weeks to put everything in place so you have, as best you can hit, hit, hit the ground running, as we say, when the season starts. Because it can be, the ISL can be an unforgiving, unforgiving league because of yep. the games. If you make a slow start, it's, it's a lot to catch up. Because even if you think back last year when we came in and we were winning games and winning games, but so was everybody else. Odisha were winning, Mumbai were winning. You know, so as much as we were winning, you still weren't getting as close as you wanted to be. And it took us, as you know, to the very, the very last game, uh, given that, obviously, the run we've been on, we've been outstanding. So I think if you can make a good start, as, as, as the team's in, and obviously the key is to be able then to sustain that. But I think the pre-season helps. So in answer to the, to the question, the pre-season, all important, it gives you a chance to put your plans in place. But in between that, it gives you a chance to, coming in what I have, to target players that you think is a specific need. Because really... Putting that team together, it's like pieces of a jigsaw. Making sure that all fits so that you have what you believe to be a team that can go and challenge to the champions. And certainly, and, and those pieces come together to, to complete the puzzle. And some of those pieces include young Indian players, and you mentioned them a couple of times in this conversation as well. There was a question from Monami Sengupta about the current squad. Um, uh, wants to know about your vision for Jamshed Pur FC. But more importantly, the bunch of emerging Indian players, as Jeet there's Jitendra, there's Aniket, there's Narinder, who Igor Shtimad speaks very highly about. And of course, Amarjeet, who, who he almost swears by in the middle of the park, but for his injury last time around. Yeah, so again, you, you mentioned those, those lads there. And every one of those, I'm, I'm excited about. And I've got to say, there'll, there'll be a few others coming in the back of that that we'll be looking to, to bring in from a, you know, Indian players bringing into the squad. And, uh, and I think they'll all, they'll all add to the mix. But the one thing I want to give them is, is that belief and that trust as a coach that, you know, young players, yeah. Young players in particular, and same with senior players, but don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's what happens. You know, you know, Ronaldo, Messi, they all make mistakes. The important thing is when it happens, it's your reaction to it. It's getting ready to go again and, you know, have the mentality we spoke about. Because if you're going to make a mistake and it's going to worry you and eat you up, then you'll not have a career. Because football, as I said, it can be unforgiving. So, but I'm really looking forward to working with the lads, hopefully give them that, that confidence, that belief, that trust. And as particularly myself and Sandy, because obviously we're a, as you say, we're a few grey hairs, we've, we've been about for a bit, so hopefully hopefully we can impart that knowledge, that experience, you know, a little bit of whatever you want to call it, they've picked up along their journey, and to help the young Indian players, because you're right, Jumshed to the club have always been known for young, you know, young, talented players, and we want to grow and develop, not only for Jumshed to but for the national team as well, and you're right, I mean, I had a chat with Igor a couple of nights ago, and he mentioned some of the lads too, and he said, oh, some good young players, and that was brilliant for me, 
because I know the national team's looking, looking at them and I want to help them develop them, obviously for us, and then, you know, with the national team in, in mind. But the first only way you get to the national team is by doing well for your club team. So that's got to be the focus. You do well for Jim Shedpur and your respective club and you're catching the eye of the, of the, of the national team manager. That's a fantastic answer and great vision as well. And don't worry about the grey hair. Some of us are greying uh, already. <laughs> watching Indian football, you're having those nervous moments against the likes of Bangladesh and Afghanistan. So, don't you worry about them. Well, you're, you're only going to grow Indian football. That's not there. <laughs> that's just old age. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next question is from Sriram5766. And um, he wanted to know your favourite player in the Jamshed Pur FC squad. I actually add to that. And I wanted to know, have you had a chat to inter uh, chat? Uh, have you had a chance to interact with some of the JFC players just yet? No, so obviously with, with the announcement only the other day, uh, and obviously, as you know, I've been doing numerous, uh, which I've, I've loved every second of, but numerous interviews and, and, and everything else. So, no, that will all, yeah. all be done in good time. And uh, and the good thing is that, you know, I like to get, get them all together. So, you know, it's difficult at the moment because you're not face-to-face and physically been in amongst. But there's no doubt, having looked at, at the squad, you know, there, there's... Some terrific, talented young players. I, I don't want to, as I say, if I, I come on and mention them individually, then somebody's not been mentioned. They think, oh, you've spoken about him, you've not spoken about him. Why is that? But you know, you mentioned that you know the four young lads you mentioned there earlier on. You know, they're talented players. I'll mention Amadou just because he did have the injury, and we all know the talent and the ability he has. So that's you know, if he's himself fully fit. And the other good thing I would hope, and this is the thing I would really hope when when they've looked at what we did last year. The, the trust that we gave in the Indian players, then they will be afforded that same trust. You know, but in answer to that, they then have to deliver on the back of that. Yeah. Because football is all about opportunity. You get the opportunity, you've got to maximise that opportunity. And if you look even, you know, as I say last year, and uh, it'd be remiss if we never mentioned Chat Shenan because a wonderful club with some wonderful players. And if you look at some of the, the players that came back to, for example, Jerry wasn't even in the team. Jerry came back yeah. to Gary excelled, wonderful left foot, but confident and looked a completely different player from what he had in the first half of the season. Uh, Din Liana came into the team and got better and better. He was out. Din Liana was outstanding on the right hand side. Edwin moved from yeah. obviously from the right row back into the middle when 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 German had been suspended. Who German and Tapa were terrific together, and Edwin came in and did well as well. And all of a sudden, you had unbelievable competition. But the reason I mention that is because. Everybody else was playing a, a foreigner, and there's nothing wrong with that, a foreigner in the central midfield. Because as coaches, they see that as a crucial part of the team. And I totally understand yeah. that, and I totally agree with that. But I had so much confidence in the boys I had that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, a tap on those boys, they, in all due respect, but they were as good as anybody in the league, and they showed that. And I think that was a great vindication of Indian football in showing when you give the lads the opportunity and the belief and the trust, the Indian players will respond to that. Because they're, they're fit, they're athletic, they have an unbelievable desire, and they really are. They're very humble. They're, listening, they're willing to listen and to learn. And I, I mean, listen, I loved every second to work with those lads. And that's why I'm looking forward to the opportunity with the boys you mentioned uh, at Jump Shed Pool and the ones we're bringing in to complement the squad. Certainly, and not a lot of people realise that uh, the second highest goal scorer in uh, the history of the ISL, JJ Lal Beklua, wasn't even available. And, and he still went on to score a bucket full of goals. So that, that tells you a thing or two about uh, what could be available to them. Similarly for Jamshedpur, Sergio Castell got injured. And, um, you know, suddenly uh, the bite in the attack went, went with him a little bit. PT, the, you know, the, the dangerous playmaker, was also missing for them. So a lot of factors contribute to a season like that. But you mentioned Edwin Sidney Vanspol. And my next question is from Anubrata, who actually uh, talks about one of the Let's Football live sessions where uh, Mr. Edwin Vanspol said, uh, that when you came into the uh, came to Chennai FC, it was a bit of a bad phase. But you were always thinking of winning the trophy when CFC were winless. How do you tackle these situations with uh, composure? Any tips is what Anubrata wants to know. Well, again, I think it's you, you have to be. When he says that, I was saying that from a position of having seen the players, and so I wasn't coming in and saying this from a blind position. I'd seen them on the on the training ground. And I knew, I knew they were better than, than what they've shown for whatever reason. And that's no slight or disrespect to anybody because sometimes there's circumstances and different things. So when we looked at them, and that was part of the reason for taking the job to begin with, when I watched the matches, I thought, I mentioned the margins. 
the fine margins they had. There wasn't a, I just think there's some things you need to fix and different things to tweak and everything else. But my belief was, if you have that winning run, because what's key in football, Anna, as we know, is momentum. Winning yep. momentum. And equally, losing. If you're losing, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to get back up and running again. And when we came in, we were in yep. the same place as Hyderabad. But I really looked and I thought, you know, we, you know, we can really come and do something, particularly after the first game, ironically, at Jamshedpur, because you're right, barring, barring Farouk punching the ball in in the last minute, <laughs> then, then, then it, would, it would have been a winning start. But I've seen enough in the game to know we had good players and we could build a really good team. And I remember after the game saying, and we were all disappointed to lose the late goal, I said, but I'll tell you what, I've seen enough to, tonight against, because Jamshedpur were a very good side, they were in the top four at the time, I said, you're playing a team that's already in the top four. So that tells me we can stand, and I always use this reference in football because it's important, we can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. I really believe that from, from what I've seen, and we continue to do that. And of course, the training, the boys will tell you, I mean, you, you, you've spoken to them all, Edwin and Tapa and all the lads, they love their training, we train at a very high intensity, but there's a reason for it, Anna, because we train the way we expect them to play. If you're going to go and train and you don't train at that, then you don't, cut your fingers and it falls into place on the field. You have to, the preparation is so important. So we have to make sure the, the small detail, all the preparation, and that takes us into, into the match. Again, as we said, some very good teams, some fantastic individual players, but great great teams in the league and fantastic coaches. But, you know, listen, it's exciting. We're looking forward to it and we'll give everything our power to, to achieve success. Just building on that point, uh, coach, 2019-20 season, uh, you know, you, you came in, you had a, I think there was a nine-day sort of forced break for the team that time. And you, and you said that that was my best opportunity to get to know the players, to understand their individual relationships and to get the best out of them. Do you think now with Jamshed Perefsi, now that you have this time to interact with them, get to know them a little better, even if it's uh, virtually uh, through mediums like these, would that help you a little more because of what happened with Chennai? Yeah, I, I think it will. I mean, I'm, I'm so pleased that you mentioned that because you're right. Because what happened after Jim Shed, where we were scheduled to play at Northeast two or three days later, yeah. and and that was the time obviously there was a little bit of political unrest, uh, and the game the game was cancelled. So what had done we we obviously went back to Chennai. But you're right, it afforded us I think it was ten days, nine days preparation. So instead of having a game two days later, because when you come out of the Jim Shed game, the first thing you're thinking about is recovery, making sure players are recover so they can then start to build up for the next match. But we then. Yeah. And those nine or ten days, and we were able to go, I've got to say, on a, a lovely training pitch, able to go and get the work done, see with our own eyes what we had, what we didn't have, what could we change. And if you think from the Jamshedpur game to the next game, which was at home against Kerala, uh, we did, we made a number of changes. But those changes were made because of what I seen in the training ground. And the reason I mention that is, had we played at North East uh, two or three days later, I would have been more inclined to play the same team that played at Jamshedpur because they played very well and I know we drew one each but probably couldn't have won it. But because I had those nine or ten days, the team was slightly different when we went to play uh, a home to Kerala, a game that we won and we played very well. Uh, a game that we actually scored a great goal and the referee, after three minutes, cancelled the goal out. But anyway, but the thing about it was that trait and an answer to that, that's why the pre-season will be of enormous importance because it gives yeah. you it gives you those five, six weeks to put everything in place. It gives you an opportunity to get players physically ready, get them mentally ready, but equally they know exactly what the, what the expectation is, what the desire, what the plan is, and how to go about it. So, of course, there's no doubt that that's going to help. Ian Hume was on this uh, conversation. I don't know if he's still uh, there, but he was saying hello to you and congratulations uh, on the new job. Right, listen, hey, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a young Hume or any member in about Listen, he was different. <laughs> he was different last. And the thing about him, not only his goals, but he, I always say that he was a proper team player. He gave everything for his team. Anybody that watched him, and the thing about it, he didn't, he didn't have to score goals to contribute because of his work rate, his application, his desire. And when as a fan, because, that, you know, as much as you're a head coach, you're a football lover, you're a fan. And when, he, you know, when you watched him, you thought, yeah, that's a team player. That's somebody that's prepared to do everything for a team. And that's the type of boys you want to have in your club. No, he's a great lad. So, uh, he's on great. Good to hear from you. Well, certainly, certainly is the same in, in studio as well. Though he does tend to give me a little bit of stick sometimes <laughs> here and there. But that's okay. That's a part of being in you. Uh, another number seven, actually. So, that's, that's quite interesting. Fits in very nicely with what you have in your background. 
Um, I'll, I'll move to the next one, which is uh, a little bit about the insight that you that you sort of that you can give us in terms of how players respond to you. We spoke about the nine-day break and how you got to know the players better in Chennai, and now you're looking to do the same with Jamshedpur. The, the Mahesh Rajgaur wanted to know uh, about the youngsters that have uh, that have impressed you in the Chennai camp, and uh, who are the ones that you're looking out for from an Indian national team perspective over there. Yeah, well, I think you know, immediately when you come into the league, I mean, there's good players. There really are. There's good players in every team. And, uh, you know, for example, the Chennai team that I work with. And that's the other thing as well, Anna, as you know, when you watch games, as you do all the time, which you've seen, I mean, you, you think, I like that player, I like that player. You know, they're good players. Yeah. But until you get to work with them on a daily basis, you know, that, that's when you see their, their, their qualities. I remember, for example, in England looking and thinking, you know, that, that boy Gary Cahill, he, he looks a good player at Bolton. When I became as his head coach, he was Gary Kill was unbelievable. That's why he went on to win Champions League and Premier Leagues and everything else. Because he was, as much as I knew he was a good player, he was even better than what I seen. You know, Tapa, for example, I'd seen the footage and I watched Tapa. But when you get to see Tapa on a daily basis, I mean, that kid, he could go, and, he could, for me, he could go and play in most leagues. He's got a bit of everything about him. And he's so humble. He's a team player, but a tremendously talented player. Really a wonderful, wonderful player. And again, you know, those boys that I work with, I love them the second level. I love as well how, how they grew. I mean, Tapa and German together, they, they were as good as any partnership. And they were as good as any partnership in the league. German was very unfortunate because suspended. Then Edward came in. And Edward had come from, yeah. full, he'd come from fullback where he, where he had excelled. And came in and himself and Tapa were the same. It, it was though just everything carried on. So I was very lucky in that respect that they were good players. And they... I think they understood what, what I required from them. They knew that I gave them the, the trust in them to go and do that. And I think they, I think they enjoyed that trust. I think they excelled. Shomte, for example, Shomte had, hadn't scored the goal since we came in. He'd threatened, he'd looked dangerous. And I think for me, it was, it was just having a good chat with Shomte and explaining to him. Because I think he was feeling the burden. It was, you know, it was weighing heavily on his shoulders. And I said to him, yeah. you just need to relax and enjoy your football. I think you're actually trying... If it's possible, you're trying too hard. You know, when he was getting there, it was intense. Relax, you know, and, and enjoy what you're doing. And uh, and actually, Shanti ended up the top, you know, with all due respect to Shetty, who's a wonderful player. Shetty, a lot of Shetty's goals were penalties. Shanti was actually the top scoring Indian player from, from open play and the amount of goals he had in his turn. But not only that, he also had assists. And it was though that it was kind of like a burden was taken off his shoulders. Because I said, yeah. I just want you to go and play and enjoy yourself. Play with a smile. If you make mistakes, that'll happen. Don't, I always say, don't ever worry about mistakes. Just be ready to try and correct them when you can and be ready to deal with the next thing. There's not a player that plays a world of football that doesn't make a mistake. But if you're, yeah. th if you're thinking about that you're going to make mistakes all the time, then you will. Fair enough. A great point once again. And I mean, I know you like your wingers and you like, your, uh, you like the ball hitting the back of the net. But it takes some guts and gumption to play two Indians in the middle of the park like Papa or German or Tapa and Edwin Sidney Vanspot. So that was something new to all of us, you know, watching two Indians take responsibility in the middle of the park and yet having a season like they did. Is that something you envision with Jamshed for FC as well going forward? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, we have some wonderful players. I mean, obviously, I, I taught there as well, I taught Madoy, who's a wonderful player. But mm -hmm. like I've always said, regardless of positions, if players good, are good enough, Anna, they'll, they'll play, you know. If, if the players that are there are good enough, then I'll have no fear of playing them. I'll have no fear of playing because primarily, as we know, through the league, most clubs tend to have the foreigners at centre-back, one in the middle, one at nine and one at ten, kind of through the, the spine of the team. But listen, if I have if Indian players that are, that are better in that position, then they'll play. It's as simple as that. So everything I always say will be done on merit. If somebody's good enough to play, it comes back to part of the, the, the attraction of Jim Shedkin as well. I don't care what age they are. If they're young enough, they'll play. So if someday, if we find a special talent at 16 and he's good enough to play, then he'll play the team. I mean, it brings me back to, obviously, when, when uh, young Jay Rodriguez, who's back at Burnley, but we did, you know, Jay developed the Burnley into the team. I took Jack Wilkshire and loan from Arsenal at 16 and a half, 17, straight into the Premier League. If they're good enough, they'll play. And that's, so that, I think, if I'm part of the academy and come through the club and I can hear the head coach saying that, I would be excited in that challenge because I'm thinking when I come in I want to show my quality because we have somebody it doesn't matter what age you are if you're good enough you're going to play. 
Excellent. I, I, I'll, I'll move to uh, I'll move to something that I, I I don't think I've asked another coach before, but Antesh Singh actually prompts me to. So his question is, who's your favorite coach in Indian football? Somebody oh. you like, you admire? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously we had the coaches meeting. So because when you're competing at the side, it can be passionate, it can be frantic, and everything <laughs> else. Yeah. It really can. But I've got to say that uh, we had the coaches meeting, and you get to meet people in in a kind of different environment. You know, a little bit more relaxed and everything else. And I've got to say, all the, all the lads were uh, really, really nice. Obviously, one or two has changed uh, since then. But Joseph Gumbel, for the start example, uh, got, got on really well. I thought he was a lovely, lovely man. really was. Antonio Habas, obviously, who I, I, I met in the final. Very, very good man. Uh, one or two of the staff I actually know. I mean, new people. But, so there was a, a little connection there as well. And I've got to say that... Uh, the coach that before me, Antonio Ariondo, an absolute gentleman, and uh, I got on really well with Antonio. Although his uh, uh, his English was was limited, so but it was very you know as football people you can still you get to understand. So I mean, listen, I was uh, I was in admiration. I've got to say them as as people because I think it's important as well. As much as you're talented in what you do or you're perceived to be, I think it's really important that you're a nice, a genuinely nice person with it. And I found that they were all, all good lads. And that's important, you know, because when you're conducting yourself on and off the park, being representative of your club, you must represent it in a good manner and a good light. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to do. So, yeah, I think that's certainly, you know, very, very, I would suggest the coaching get better every year in the league, as the players are or the teams are, because the Indian Super League is growing, it's growing. I think you'll know this better than me, but did I read last week that it's the, the fourth most popular in the league in, in Instagram? I thought I read that somewhere last year. The, the Indian Super League. Yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. And obviously, you must have, a, must have played a part in that yourself, and so. But listen, that's, 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 a, that's a fantastic thing to know that everybody's growing, the league gets growing, yeah. developing, and globally, people have been made aware of it. They're understanding, oh, yeah, they have good teams, they have good players. So, that, so it's great to be part of that. And I think to, to the point, then I think the coaches are playing their part in doing that. You know, and I could, I could go through every one of them because they've all done very well for different reasons. And this year, obviously, some new coaches coming into the league as well. So, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be exciting. It's going to be special. And, and I look forward to meeting each and every one of them. I thought you were almost going to give a few names away, uh, which haven't been announced yet. But, okay, I, I, won't, I won't push you in that direction <laughs> anymore. I'll, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, you know, we're, we're also talking about Indian football growing. And Shubham Singh had a great question uh, about you having managed clubs like Bolton, Wigan, Blackburn, which you mentioned as well. How do you compare the quality of ISL uh, to some of these English teams? I know there's a there's a chasm, there's a there's a there's a huge gap, but how does an Indian club try and bridge that gap? According to you? Yeah, no, I, I think uh, I think it's a very well thought out question. It is because the important thing is that we do bridge the gap, we do get better, and I think you know from looking over the years as a habit, the league, the league is growing, the league is developing. Now you have to yeah. well, I mean, the league obviously. In, in its infancy, really, in terms of world, in terms of world football as a league, as the ISL. So, if you think about English football, you know it's maybe nearly a, nearly 150 years. So, there have been a lot of time to to put. So, we have kind of. I, but but the thing, the great thing with the ISL is the ISL has took such a big jump in such a short space of time. So, is there things that needs to yeah. be better? At? Absolutely. I mean, I mentioned before, we, there needs to come a point that we increase the amount of games to help the Indian players. That in turn helps the national team. It helps everybody because you know, I know how passionate you know people are with you know supporting the national team as well. How you know sport is a is a great release and a great love you know for everybody. And if you're doing well domestically in the national team, that helps everybody. So is there a way to go to get to those levels? Yes, but is it moving in the right direction? One hundred percent, absolutely. So it's getting better, and I think ultimately with the, the criteria. When, when that comes in in regards of AFC, which is obviously Champions League slots now available and, and everything else that goes with it, then the development of Indian players, I think, is going to be crucial to the league, you know, keeping on improving. Because you could easily, you know, people could easily say, well, go and get 11 foreigners, there you go, there's a high standard. But yeah. you have to develop the Indian players so that they, they are the standard. They're there on their own merit and they're showing what a wonderful league it is. And the thing is, I mean, I've said this before, because of the size of the country, because of the population, I have no doubt there's fantastically talented young players out there, you know, both in the men's game and the women's game. So wonderfully talented players. Our job, I think, with everybody 
is to, is to find them and put an infrastructure in place, if possible, like kind of grassroots, yeah. to grow and develop. And if we do, because of the population, because of the love of the game, because of what I've seen with my own eyes with the Indian players, there's huge potential for this to get better and better. But we need probably people at the very high end of economy to, to play the part and to help to put this uh, grassroots in place. And, and everything obviously takes time. You've got to... You've got to... You know, bite that that patience bullet every now and then because it, you you do get you do get these setbacks. Yeah. But but I move to what is my favorite question, or, or should I say, it's been selected as a favorite question by a grand jury of one, which is only me. Um, and it comes from Morris Bhagat, and he wanted to know how will you use um, every Indian and foreign player having less experience when the team is under pressure to win the match. And he mentions how the season usually, you know, as the season progresses in the second half of the season, there tend to be injuries. Foreign players sometimes uh, are not at their best or they've gotten injured and then the Indian players have to fly the flag high. How do you manage a situation like that under pressure? Yeah, uh, well, I again, I think with regards, because we use this word all the time, pressure in football. Every, ga every game you're under pressure because that's the nature, that's the nature of football. But I think, I think they're right. I think the question is a very clever question because when it comes to the fact there's 18 games and the top four men go to the playoffs, when you come to that second half of the season... Every game, Anand, is like a must-win. You, you must yeah. win to, to either stay in the four or you must win to get to the four. And, and I think that's why the, the importance and the, and the value uh, of each and every player is so important. And that's why I've always said, and I, and I really mean this, the player that plays 18 games in the league, the player that plays two games, he's as important as the man that plays 18. Because that, that, that player, everybody's got their role to play. Sometimes some days I first pick the play every week and they're an absolute star in the team, but they work for the team. And there's some day that, that may come in and play two games, but that man is important. And that's what, what I'm always talking about with the group, that talented individuals, yes, but nobody's more important than the other. We've all got a role yeah. to play. And everybody will be asked upon because of the nature of the game. It's a physical game. There's a, a, a little injury and there's a suspension, which can happen. So people need to be ready on the, uh, whether it's on the bench and the squad, and the other thing I always say, when you have that opportunity of coming from the bench, if you go in and play well in your maximum, then you stay in the team. Uh, for, so for me, it's got to be deemed to be a fair fight. And if you're in the team, you're there on merit. So in answer to the question, yeah, that's so important, particularly those games, the must-win games, as we call them. Obviously, I experienced yeah. that last year for every game. Every game, every game became a must-win game. And so that's something I'm obviously used to now. And if it comes that same situation then I'll look forward to it. There was an intriguing point there about playing 18 games because I was going through the stats a little bit and I saw that what is roughly around 250 players flying their trade in the Hero ISL in a season, assuming 25 times 10. Uh, there were only five, five players or I think half a dozen players that actually finished 18 games for their teams or more. And uh, Aitor was the only foreigner to have, to have done that, uh, you know, for Jamshedpur in this case. So it just tells you a story about how fitness is going to play a key part as well. Uh, may not be travel required this time, coach, but at least uh, so that's that's possibly one aspect taken care of. Sometimes travel takes its toll. Uh, but according to you, what will be the biggest challenge and what will be, uh, you know, a bubble season, if we can call it that? Yeah, no, I think you're right on that. And, and uh, when you look at that, it's going to be the, this, this bubble that we're all in. Then I think yeah. you mentioned it there, which is an important one as well in terms of, I think you're right. I think sometimes when you've come out of a game, and somebody's got a little niggle injury, then if you are, for example, flying or whatever, it can have an impact on injury. And I mean, that's a very good point you make. So the fact there won't be probably that sort of traffic, that might help in that respect. So, but again, you're right, because within that uh, bubble or whatever it's called, if movement is restricted to different things, then it's something that we have to be aware of because it's important that physically and mentally we have the players in, in a good place so that they're able to show their quality on the field. That, uh, that statistic doesn't really surprise me in terms of for somebody to play the 18 games because it is, you know, it's a physically demanding season within obviously the period of time. So that's why I mentioned yeah. earlier, when you come out of the game, the recovery is all important, you know, because people think, oh, you're out of the game, you're getting ready for the next game. You have to make sure you recover in between. Once you have your recovery, then you start to prepare for the next game. Yeah. So it's putting all those little bits into place and, you know, when you go on a game, it's not... People think you just pick a team and you go and play. Nothing could be further for the truth. There's so many small details, and that's important that you make sure you cover those small details because one of those ones could eventually let you down on the field. 
Uh, we're coming to the end of this now. Thank you so much for that, and I think it was much needed uh, from fans' point of view because they'll be watching on their tablets, on their phones, and and of course on their television sets this time around. Uh, we usually uh, we usually have a round called One Touch Let's Football, where uh, you know we try and play like a rapid fire with uh, with our guests. So uh, because because it's open call and it's such a pleasure and privilege, I, I thought I, I'll twist it around a little bit and I, I'll close this session with what I call a rapid fire quiz. So let's see how many how many answers you get right. Are you ready for this? Oh, right, okay, you're throwing me in the deep end here. Okay. Let's see. It's, it's, it's all about you and your team. So I'm sure that you might you might get a few right, no, if not no, all of them. I don't need a phone a friend option. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. And you could have called Jamshedpur if you weren't using their handle. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'll, I'll go to the first one. How many goal scorers did Chennai FC have under you? Six, seven, or eight? Oh wow. Six, seven. I would think eight. That's absolutely spot on. Should I? Should I? Should I dare ask you who they were? <laughs> oh, well, I'll be able to tell you if you want to know who they were. Obviously, yeah, please go ahead. Well, the easy ones is obviously uh, Vasquez, Cleveryero, Shimberi, Shanti. I'm just working my way back through the park. Shanti, uh, that's five. Is that right? Uh, well, you got four so far: Vasquez, Cleveryero, Shanti, and uh, Shambri. Yeah, my front four. Yeah, Cleveryero. Yeah, uh, Shanti, uh, Tapa. Tapa, Tapa. Lucia, Lucian, yes. Ellie, Ellie was seven, and actually the last game of the season at North East when 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 Massey when Massey drove the left foot into the, <laughs> I've got to say that it, is, it should have been ten and eleven because we had some wonderful chances. Yeah, but that's eight, true. Yeah. I, I can't believe it, but that is, that is a cracking start, by the way. Absolutely love it. Um, now I'll come to the next one. Which was the only team you managed to beat more than once? Well, that would have been Kerala. We beat Kerala at home, and then we went. And obviously, we scored. I think it was it was it six we scored at Kerala. So uh, yeah, yeah. Kerala, Kerala home and away. You had a cracking win in Kochi, but what was the experience like in Kochi? A lot of Kerala Blasters fans have been asking your favourite away stadium. Would that be Kochi? Safe oh, to say? yeah, I've got to say, listen, the the, the stadium at, at Kerala, the the fans, and, and this is you know it's, it becomes a common theme. I've got to say in Indian football because the fan bases that the clubs have. They've been truly incredible. And what I loved, and I've got to say this, I mean, they're passionate about their own teams. But what I also noticed as well, which was really nice at different places, they were very respectful of the opposition. And it kind of took me back to my early days as a player, Anand, because growing up, that's what it was. You supported your team. But if there was a good player in the opposition, you recognised him as a good player. Now, that's kind of changed a bit in Britain now because sometimes it's more kind of abuse you get as, a, as an opposition. Uh, but that was nice. But you know the fans at Kerala, the, I mean, got behind the team. And I know obviously when Kerala is going well, the, the crowd that they could draw to the stadium. But the stadium was brilliant. The playing stuff is, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I like playing on. If you're going to have a team that pass and move and play exciting football, that's the stuff that is the ones that jump shed for. We had at Shan, Kerala. That type of stuff is conducive to great football. And uh, and Ogbeche with his heroics that weren't enough for the day, uh, you know, for Kerala Blasters. But that was the kind of run you guys were on. Okay, uh, then the next one. You went on a long, unbeaten run towards the end of the league stages. How many games was it for? How many games were unbeaten? Well, uh, we came in. Jim Shedpur was one each. We beat Kerala at home. Uh, we lost at home to Goa four three, and then we lost at Odisha when, as you know, we missed a penalty at zero zero, and the pitch was. And it'll be a new good pitch this season, but. It was just embedded in. So we take those first four games out of the road. They've already played six, ten, eight, nine. So would have been nine unbeaten, including the I'm counting the first leg of the, the semi final against Goa. Outstanding. This is the best start I've ever had, I think, to uh, one touch let's football. And this is a quiz, it's not even the same. So it's it really not, not very well in my head. <laughs> Absolutely outstanding. Eight league stage games and one semi-final against FC Goa, which stayed in my memory for the longest time. What an outstanding win that turned out to be at the Marina Arena. Okay, your first Hero ISL win came against... That should be easy for you. Yeah, well, the first, the first win came against Kerala. And I've got to say that... Do you know what was noticeable about that game as well, though? Because yeah. the Shenan fans were... I mean, it was their first home game. They, they were outstanding. They came. They were, they were vocal. They were, even the build-up to the game. You know, when we... Uh, Obviously, Apollo Tire sponsored the club, and we have a cavalcade of motorcyclists that take us to the game. And so we're, we're going there, and I've got to say, we're buzzing with excitement, adrenaline in the first home game. But the amount of Kerala fans that were there as well, you know, Kerala had a great support, 
And so the atmosphere was brilliant that night. And there was a few dramatic, as you know, a few dramatic incidents in the game. And it just, I think actually it was a, it was a, because of, we had the goal disallowed, if you remember. And then we end up scoring a wonderful goal like a minute later. And I, I think I, yeah. made, I, I made an attempt to jump. I didn't get too high off the ground, but it was just everything, everything was, was flowing that night. And it was brilliant. Really enjoyed that. Oh, the Kerala fans travel everywhere. So that, that's, that doesn't come as a surprise to me. But yeah, what a moment that must have been. The first win coming and it took a while as well, didn't it, for Chennai. Uh, Chennai averaged more than two goals a game under you. In how many games did Chennai score three or more goals under you? Three or more. Uh, okay. I'm not giving you options because you're that good. Uh, so you had 15 games under you. How many, how many games did Chennai score three or more? Okay, well, the first one is Jumpshare. Kerala was, Kerala was three. Uh, Adisha wasn't. Hyderabad was three, so we're, so that's two games so far. Sorry, I, I missed Goa. Goa was three, although there was four three. Yeah. So up to Hyderabad. Hyderabad's the third one. Uh, then we uh, Jamshedpur. We scored four against Jamshedpur. North East was yeah. two, so that wasn't. And we then we obviously scored more than three against uh, Goa in the semi final. Mumbai was only one. We uh, tried to think of the other home games. Bengaluru was it? That was a zero zero. Uh, away from home, so about five at the moment. Uh, you had eighty k away from home. Eighty k away as well. There's three at six. Uh, Mumbai was one. North East was not. So I think I'm at six at the moment. I know. I'm trying to think of my other games. Uh, close, close because you didn't count Kerala twice. Okay, no, I've still got to go. I'm just going through my away games and Kerala away when we scored. Well. Are we calling it seven or are we calling it eight? Because Kerala was double three. No, seven, I'll go for seven. <laughs> I think this is the only time we have struggle in the season, but seven out of 15 is the right answer. And that is, that is as good as it can be. That's fantastic. So for Jamshedpur FC fans watching it, 15 games under Oban call, three or more goals in seven of those games. Absolutely fantastic. Not to forget the unbeaten run. Um, very quickly, the last couple. Who provided the assist for Chennai FC's first goal under your tenure? And it took a while coming. Well, the, the first goal under me. Yeah. So the first goal under me was obviously Jamshedpur, and it, it started. It started on the right. I think it was Toy Toy into Krivayero. Krivayero a reverse pass to Valskis. They took a wonderful touch across and put it across Subrata Pawi's right foot. So that would be uh, Krivayero to to Valskis. Uh, I could. May, I may as well enter your head to check to check out the highlights of that game because that's as crystal clear as it can be. So Krivayero, it is absolutely right. Chennai and FC scored their 150th goal in Hero ISL history under you. Oh. I don't know if you're much of a uh, much of a landmark man, but uh, who was the scorer of that 150th goal in Chennai and FC's history? Oh wow! <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought I'd make make it gradually tougher since you're doing so well in it. Well, I actually, I might, I might actually get. I actually want to say it was Shanti. I might be wrong on that, but I've got something in my head that said, said it was Shanti. But I might be wrong. It would certainly have been. You got the right. You got the right answer. I don't even know what to say beyond that. Talanzuala Chante versus Kerala was the 150th goal. Okay. That is outstanding, unbelievable. Much like your season. Among the four coaches that Jamshedpur FC have now had, including yourself, who has been the oldest? Who has been the oldest? Well, Steve. I mean, Steve. I know and competed against. Uh, I think maybe. I think maybe last year, maybe Antonio was just slightly older. So I'll go for Antonio Ariondo. I'm just, I'm just going to pack my bag, shut shop and never do this quiz ever again because I've been royally embarrassed by uh, framing some of these questions. So I'm going to call up my friend Aditya Varti who helps me with this quiz and I'm going to tell him, listen, we've got to make it harder. But thank you so <laughs> much. That was absolutely brilliant. I know. Um, I've loved every second part. Okay. You can sit here all day with you. you know, when you sit with, with football people and, and football lovers, then you always get a fantastic chat. I've enjoyed every moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your message to the fans just before I let you go and your big plan for next season if you can give us give them that as well. Yeah, I, th I think as always we uh, I want to put a winning team in the field but I want to put a winning team that entertains. A team that you can be proud of and you can look and when you look at it you think I really enjoy watching my team. Not only the football they play but they can win and because that's what we want to do you want to, that they have a warmth towards their own team. So we'll do everything we can to, to achieve that goal. I wish you all the best, Coach. And uh, in fact, the whole team of Let's Football Live uh, does exactly that. And we can't wait to see you in India and doing 
your business like you did in season 2019-20. Thanks, Anna. I look forward to it, my friend. Cheers. Take care. Take care. Oh, that was a cracking session with the new head coach of Jamshedpur FC. So uh, thank you so much to uh, Jamshedpur FC as well, who, who allowed us to use their handle to have a chat with uh, Owen Kohl, who himself said he doesn't use Instagram, but his son does and informs him of everything that's happening over there. But guys, thank you so much for being a part of this. To everybody who sent in their questions, to everybody who tried to answer the questions I was asking Owen Coyle as well. Great effort, but as you can see, he doesn't get much, much wrong, whether it's on the pitch or off it. So... Uh, uh, looking forward to uh, him taking charge of Jamshedpur FC and seeing what, what he can bring to the table uh, for a side that's looking to make the playoffs for the first time. Uh, right. We done that yesterday and uh, the new head coach of Jamshedpur, Owen Coyle, today. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep sending your feedback, your questions and all the love. And of course, some brickbats along the way so we can learn. Uh, but until the next time, it's goodbye.